Hello, friends. How art thou tonight? I'm happy to see you all here. Well, everyone but Noodle, of course. Noodle's too good for us tonight, I suppose. So, it's just it's just the three of us. Just the three of us. That's not how that goes. Anyways. Hello. Hello and uh, welcome, everyone, to the off-day stream that we're doing. Uh, playing some Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses. Of course, I won't be here tomorrow night for the usual Tuesday stream. So instead, we are doing this tonight. Uh, <laughs> playing, playing a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses. Because, of course, our good friend Nate there, he... Excuse me. Uh, paid some points for us to play it. It was his. It was his game choice the other day. So this is this is what we're playing, man. Actually, it's a game I've been wanting to play anyway. So I'm actually kind of happy about it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, glad to be glad to be playing it, man. Even though like it's not the classic Yu-Gi-Oh gameplay format, which I kind of wish it was, but it's still a lot of fun. The British Empire in the 1480s. The Wars of the Roses, a power struggle between the House of Lancaster, Red Rose, and York, the White Rose, to decide a royal successor who was nearing an end. With the Yorkists well in the lead, the reign of Richard III was but a step away. And in France, Yugi, Henry Tudor, the last Lancastrian heir, was being forced to live a life of exile. The Lancastrian forces were rendered powerless by ancient cards of sorcery wielded by Seto, and his seven followers, who known as the Rose Crusaders, served under the flag of Lord Crawford, a powerful Yorkist nobleman. We're getting a good uh, history lesson while we play our Yu-Gi-Oh here, men. Lacking a duelist to champion their cause, defeat was imminent for the Lancastrians. In England, dual card games were still at the fledgling stage. Thus, the Lancastrians had to look elsewhere for a duel master capable of facing the Rose and Crews in battle. <laughs> With this in mind, Margaret Mai Beaufort of Lancaster secretly requested a high druid to summon a duelist from another age. You know you have a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cars, <laughs> but you have no idea how to play? I wouldn't know how to play with Yu-Gi-Oh cars either, man. Is it like bumper cars or something like that? Like how, how does that work exactly? Somebody will have to explain that to me, man. I don't know. He thought this bitch was Egyptian, uh, Rue? It is, uh, kinda, I guess. But not this one. This game is English, obviously. Simon McMoran. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Summoned from the mystic circle of red and white roses, the one capable of harnessing pure power. There was truth to the legend of the Rose Duelist. Lady Margaret, I, I did it. Now we have the mean for defeating the evil forces of Rose and Cruz. Oh. My apologies. In my excitement, I'd forgotten. I was in the presence of the Rose Duelist. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Simon McMoran, a high druid and servant of Lan Caster. May I be so bold as to ask the name by which the Rose Duelist would like to be known? Uh, we are known as Stream. S T uh, R E A M. Stream. That is me, that is us. You paint toy cars brown and gold and throw them as you all their time to duel. I mean, that's one interpretation of the game for sure. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> that could be fun in its own way, you know? Stream, a fine name indeed. Damn right it is. Now here's the situation. The year is 18, 1485 and you are currently in Stonehenge near Salisbury, England. See, man, this is why Stonehenge was made. All these uh, like shows and shit on the History Channel and, and whatnot, trying to figure out what the hell stonehenge was built for all the songs and media dedicated to it it's so that you could summon duelists to battle with fucking cards that come to life man <laughs> the british empire is in turmoil with the house of lancaster's rightful claim to the throne being challenged by the yorkist usurpers the power struggle is refer the referred to as the wars of the roses a name based on the badges used by both sides a red rose for the lancastrians and a white rose for the yorkists Right now, our kingdom is threatened by the Yorkists and their wrongful claim to the throne. All because the Yorkists enjoy the support of the Rose Crusaders and their sorceress, White Rose Cards. Using our Red Rose Cards, we summoned you, Stream, to this day and age. We hope that your dueling experience would defeat the Rose Crusaders and lead us to victory. You will help us. Of course, you will. Foolish of me to even doubt where your loyalties lie. Rumor has it that the only 
that only the legendary Rose Duelist stands a chance against the power of Rosencruz. We appreciate any help you can provide against them. Before I forget, I should warn you that the rules to dueling differ here from those of your age. Here in England, dueling is governed by what is known as the perfect rule. In addition to several minor distinctions, there are two major differences. Is one is the existence of movement or positioning, the other is the deck leader concept. These are two aspects of dueling that were lost in the process when the ancient sport of duel monsters was adapted to card form. The perfect rule represents these lost rules that were miraculously revived here in England. Perhaps a practice duel will serve better than an explanation, shall we? Yeah, we'll do a practice duel only because it's been probably like 10 years since I've played this fucking game. So I think a, uh, I think a practice duel would be good. So when did this legend start exactly? I mean, if the war is recent, how the fuck does the legend apply otherwise? Man, I don't know. You're asking the wrong person here. <laughs> I, I know nothing. I'm just some idiot on the internet, dude. <laughs> I can't give you a lore deep dive into some random Yu-Gi-Oh game. I don't even know if this game ties into the real lore for the series or if it's just for the game. I have no clue, man. Uh, I do know, so yeah, the, the, the way dueling works in this game is weird and interesting, right? You have like this board here and you have a deck leader, so like the the person who has the health like that you don't want to die and shit like that it, it's it's weird and then there's like abilities that can change tiles and and only certain monsters can go through certain tiles and whatnot like it's weird and again i swear you was an ancient egyptian pharaoh so how is he in england at the moment yeah he is so yami yugi i think is his name is like the what everybody knows is Oh, right um but and then there's like the innocent one and one's from, like, modern-day Japan. The other one's ancient Egyptian. Um, as far as how are they all in England, I don't know. I mean, it's the same with, like, Seto Kaiba and whatnot, right? They were all in modern-day Japan or whatever, too. And now they're in Eng England? I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's probably just for this game, right? Spin-off be spin off and you know? Just something weird. Uh, first, let me show you how to summon a monster. To bring a monster into play, you must summon it from your hand to the field. Now, let's draw a card from your deck. That's the Dark Magician. Currently, the card you're indicating is your deck leader. The deck... Uh, la, 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 dark Magician. Let's order your deck leader to operate your hand. Okay. You can do this by selecting your deck leader and pressing the square button. See the blue square? That's the area where you can place your summoned monsters. Let's place the monsters in a position directly in front of your card leader. Line up the cursor by pressing the up directional button and then press the X button. Yup. Yup, yup. This is your current hand. Apparently there's only one monster in your hand that can be summoned to the field. This is because summoning a monster requires a certain amount of power. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spot currently indicated is where your currently available summoning power is displayed. At the start of a duel, you have four summoning power points. The amount will increase by three every turn and you can accumulate up to a maximum of 12. When a monster is placed in the field, summoning power points equal to the monster's level are expended. Your current summoning power points total four. Yeah. I think the series is trying too hard maybe a little bit they've had multiple incarnations over the ages that's very true too like not only lore wise have the characters had like been reborn and shit like that but also the television show itself right um has changed a lot over the years like there's multiple different versions of the show uh surprised noodle isn't in here yet noodle i wanted you love i'm gonna have to message her real quick because I forgot my lozenges downstairs and I need them. I'm 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 a useless person without them. The only monster card you can summon, blah blah blah. The dark cards are the monsters that you are unable to summon this turn. Now let's summon the Celtic Guardian. First move the cursor over the Celtic Guardian card. This isn't actually me controlling any of this, by the way. This is all in the game. <laughs> The game is doing all of this. I have no control over any of it. At this point, if you wish to cancel your selection, press the circle button. To enter your selection, press the X button once again. Yep, yep. You now summon the Celtic Guardian. Now let's attack your opponent with the Celtic Guardian. Control a monster on the field. You must first activate the card you wish to move. Okay. I would love to if I could move. 
So the first one was in Egypt and then they moved to England? Must have been a hella long line and some serious time paradox shit. Sure, why not, man? That sounds about right. Blue Eyes White Dragon is your opponent's leader. Let's try to attack the enemy leader. First, let's activate your monster by lining the cursor up over the desired card and pressing the X button. See the yellow square? This is where it can move. Your opponent's card leader is directly ahead. Let's move straight. Okay, yeah, I, I got it. I got it. The Celtic Guardian advances one space, complete its move for this turn. Monster can only move once per turn. However, a deck leader summoning does not count as a move. Hence, the monster can move immediately after being summoned to the field. Nice. Since there's nothing else left to do this turn, let's end your turn. To end your turn, press start. Okay. <laughs> you don't know about this game specifically, Nate, but like he was just saying in overall lore, they've had multiple incarnation. Yami, Egyptian, is original. Then Yaman, head priest, is Kaiba's original incarnation. Yeah, dude. Should be going hard, man. Just crazy. Ooh, that baby dragon, though. I don't think we're supposed to see necessarily what cards the enemy's playing, but like, you know. Now it's your turn. There's an enemy monster heading your way. Let's use the Celtic Guardian to eliminate the threat. To attack your opponent's monster, all you have to do is move your monster into the same space occupied by the enemy monster. Monster attacking another monster is referred to as a battle. The outcome of a battle is decided by the attack and defense factors of the respective monsters. Putting the outcome aside, let's attack. Remember how to move your monster? Yes, I do. It'd be nice if you would let me, you know, do something. <laughs> Hey, we murdered that dragon boy. You've eliminated your opponent's monster and moved one space closer to your opponent's leader. However, your opponent is now aware of your monster's strength and will probably... Oh. <laughs> All you have to do is turn off chat only. Viewing options. Weird. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Noodles, noodles broke. You can see it? Oh, you can see. Oh, right there. There was a little toggle right at the top of the screen. Oh, God, the echo. The echo is going to be real. <laughs> noodles here now, everyone. Say hi to Noodle. Bye, Noodle. Cover your opponent is now aware of your monster's strength and will probably bring a more powerful monster into play to retaliate. Now, let's take a look at the factors that govern the outcome of a battle. Maybe we shouldn't have done the fucking uh, <laughs> tutorial, man. Here's how your attack played out. Your Celtic Guardian was in the attack position. Your monster automatically assumes the attack position. Hey, Noodle, thank you so much for the 10 bits. 10? You never do 10. That's crazy. <laughs> thank you, love. The monster automatically assumes the attack position whenever it is moved. The attack position indicates that your monster has either moved or attacked. A monster that doesn't move and holds its position is said to be in the defense position. Currently, your Celtic Guardian and the opposing Baby Dragon are both in the attack position. The outcome of a battle is decided by comparing the strengths of each monster. In this case, both monsters are in the attack position, hence the attack factors are used. <sighs> I get it, game. We literally watched this already. Yup. And then we killed the bitch. I know. Oh, now we got to see what happens in the other scenario. What if it was stronger than us? Cute dragon. Baby dragon is cute. Say your opponent had a Komori dragon in play. With an attack of 1500, the monster is much more powerful than your Celtic guardian. I mean, not much more powerful. It's only 100 points. Like... <laughs> yup. Yup. We attack, and then we die. Yep, that's that's what happened in that situation, If if that's what happened. But it's not. You also lose life points for the difference. That's the other thing that I showed there. What if the attacks were equal? Let's say a Winged Dragon Guardian of the Fortress number one with an attack of 1400 is brought into play. Some of the uh, fucking names for creatures in Yu-Gi-Oh! are a little bit ridiculous, man. Winged Dragon Guardian of the Fortress number one? Like, <laughs> bruh. What happens in this situation? What if we are equal? And everyone's dead. <laughs> yup. Yeah. Now let's see what happens if you were in defense position, or if they were in defense position, I guess. Hard Armor is a monster with a high defense factor. The card is currently horizontal or in the defense position. A monster sent in this position cannot move or attack. In battle, the defense of a monster in the defense position is used to decide the outcome. Although the defense of Hard Armor is fairly high, it is nothing compared to the attacking Celtic Guardian. Let's attack the monster. And he's dead. 
but no life points were uh, taken away. Hard armor is eliminated. Note that an eliminated monster in the defense position will not inflict any damage to the player controlling the eliminated monster. Yup. That's actually kind of important to know. See what happens if the defending monster is Aquamador. This card has a defense of 2,000. What happens when you attack this monster with your Celtic Guardian? Couldn't you have just, like, I don't know, had a scripted battle for us or something instead of literally just making us read 20 blocks of tech? So we take life points damage, but we don't die. Neither do they. No one dies. <clears throat> Fuck. <coughs> if you attack the Rock Ogre Grotto number two, whose defense is equal to your monster's attack. Everybody dies again. No, it should just be them. Or no, nobody dies. Okay. That works. Let's continue with the duel. Thank fuck. <laughs> As you recall, your Celtic Guardian successfully moved into a position where it could attack your opponent's leader. Did it? Opponent's leader is unsupported and defenseless, leaving it wide open for a direct attack. A direct attack is an ideal opportunity to inflict major damage. Attacking a leader will result in inflicting LP damage equivalent to the attacking monster's attack power. Let's try a direct attack. The procedure is the same as setting up a battle between two players or whatever, two, two creatures. Basically, attack to do damage. That's that's all you need to say. Now inflicted 1,400 points of damage to your opponent's LP. And now on your way to victory. Woo woo. Everybody get hype. <laughs> as you can see, it's important to avoid direct attacks. Yep. Very important. Currently, you're winning. However, your opponent may retaliate. With this in mind, summon a monster with high defense. Let's use this monster to protect the front of your leader. Set a monster into the def defense position. Follow the same step as movement. And set the cursor over your monster card and select it. Now press L1, R1 to toggle between attack and defense. Be careful that you don't move the monster to its destination space, as this will automatically set the monster into its attack position. Yep, yep, got it, got it. Can't move. Note that a monster card summoned on the field is initially placed face down and is hidden from your opponent's view. The card will be flipped face up whenever it attacks or is attacked by an enemy. You may also manually flip a card face up. To do so, select the card for a move and press the L2R2 button to toggle the card face up. And once you have the card in the desired position, press the X button to enter your selection. You're too sleepy to get hyped? Honestly, I feel that. I feel that, Noodle. <laughs> should note that a face-up card cannot be returned to a face-down position. That's why you should be very careful when you manually turn a card face-up. I can't think of too many situations when you would want to, right? Opponent has now summoned a Kaiser Dragon, a powerful dragon type. You don't have a monster that's strong enough to withstand an attack from this creature. Fortunately, you have a magic card on the field that's capable of stopping the dragon. We have a magic card on the field? When the fuck did we do that? In fact, this magic card is capable of preventing the movement of all dragon type monsters on the field. Let's so use the magic to stop the opposition and focus on continuing our attack on the opponent's leader. You can trigger a magic card by flipping it face up and completing its move. Flip the card face up in the manner described. Let's try activating a magic card. See, it would be very helpful if it actually let me put in the inputs to, like, flip this shit up and move it around and whatnot. Like, you know, other games do. Because then I'd be able to, you know, maybe maybe get a little bit of a feel for the game instead of just fucking reading it. Everything. <laughs> like, that's not how I learn, man. I learn by doing shit. A duel can go either way. At times, you may find yourself cornered by a cunning opponent. There will be occasions when there's nothing you can do but accept defeat and go for a rematch. You may surrender a match by pressing the select button. Anybody know a website where they have cliff notes for college textbooks? My teacher apparently actually expects us to read chapters 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7 in one week. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> that's, that's a lot of reading to do in one week. Sadly, I do not, though. None of my teachers in college were that ridiculous that I felt the need to look up the cliff notes for textbooks. So... Yeah, I'm sorry. And, uh, I think I'm the only one here that went to college, at least out of, like, myself, Noodle, and Nate. So, um, I mean, I don't know. They spend enough time on the internet, maybe they've heard of something. Why did I take your permissions away for hashtag going live? Because people don't need to be putting messages and going live. Besides me. <laughs> I mean, anybody else who ends up being a streamer and wants to use this channel to, to self-promote themselves, too. Um, like, you know, from, from my friend group that I that I would do stuff with, and, like, yeah, I'll add them in, but otherwise. Someone please murder me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you went to college just didn't graduate? I don't think I knew that, Nate. What did you go to college for, man? 
You can't even view the message you posted, though? Wait, what? That shouldn't have been a thing. Hold on. Permissions. View channel. Save changes. Huh. You know what it might be? Let me, uh... No, wait, yeah. No, you should be able to. Like, I have, I have the permission set so everyone can see that channel. Everyone can view. Everyone can create invites. Embed links, attach files, use external, can add reactions. Manage message, manage threads, read message history. Oh, you know what? I should probably... I should probably have that one on too, though. So that you can see, like, previous messages or whatever. There you go. Yeah, it should work now. Like, you should be able to see previous messages. I didn't realize whenever I turned that off that, uh... It would take away all the messages. I didn't pay enough attention. It should be working now, Noodle. So you went to Southern New Hampshire University? What for, though, is what I was curious about. One condition to win or lose is to reduce an opponent's LP to zero. Got it. What else do we got? Code of Guardian is about to execute a direct attack. Blah, 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 blah. You went for business? Maybe you did mention that at some point. Right, it sounds familiar, you saying something about going going to school for business. Since they only have a LP of a thousand points left, we win the game. Done. Dusted. That's another game. Done and over. Oh. <laughs> we beat it. We did it. It's all over now, guys. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, we killed them. That's one way to win. I'm guessing running out of cards. Uh, your opponent has a not too powerful needle ball monster in play. However, the monster has a special ability. And the monster is eliminated in battle, it automatically inflicts 500 points of damage, so we both die, is what's going to happen in this situation. Business sucks for Major. Your college actually wants you to take calculus for it. I can kind of see it, right? I mean, calc might be a little much. Like, pre-calculus, I think, would probably be more than enough, but... Uh, as you can see... <laughs> Guys, I think the... Uh, I think the translation for this game may have been a little bit uh, poor. I'm not, I'm not positive, but uh, I don't think they spent too much time and money on it. The LPs of both players have been reduced to zero. The result is a draw match. In this manner, the outcome of a duel is decided after all the triggered effects have been taken into account. Be careful that you don't get dragged into a draw when you have a good chance of winning a match. Fucked up? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's one way of putting it. <laughs> Another condition that decides the outcome of a duel is the occupation of summon areas. The area is indicated in blue whenever you attempt to summon a monster called Summon Areas. Oh, yeah, like if you completely surround someone so they can't summon anything. I think that's another way to lose or win or whatever. If all of these areas are occupied by your opponent's forces, you will lose the match. To be more specific, if your opponent occupies all your summon areas at the end of your turn, you lose. If you find yourself surrounded, it is vital that you clear at least one of these areas before your turn is over. If your leader is in this position, that leaves you with only three summon squares. When you're at the edge like this, there are only a few summon areas, and if they're all occupied, you lose, bitch. Depending on terrain conditions, there are spaces that cannot be used to summon areas. In this situation, there are fewer summon areas, and if they are occupied by your opponent, you'll lose. Got it. The next condition for deciding the outcome of a duel is LP comparison, resulting from the clock running out on a duel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got that too. And the number of turns remaining reaches both players complete their respective turns, the outcome of the duel will be decided. In this case, the players with the higher number of life points is declared the winner. Hence, maintaining a lead is a key strategy for a smart duelist. How bold of you to assume that we're smart. <laughs> the final condition for winning is unleashing the power of Exodia the Forbidden One. It is said that somewhere in this world there are five very rare cards known as Exodia the Forbidden One and its four forbidden limbs. Individually, these cards are weak due to the spells that bind them. However, once those spells are broken, an unstoppable force is unleashed. To release Exodia from the binding spells, the following steps are required. You have Exodia the Forbidden One. First, Exodia the Forbidden One must be brought into play as your deck leader. Uh-huh. 
Then you must position the four limbs of Exodia in the surrounding summon areas. From there, flip over to the attacking position. When you enter your turn without any spells or controls preventing you from executing a normal turn, Exodia will be freed and your opponent will face hopeless defeat at the hands of this awesome creature. Get wrecked, noob. G fucking G. That's pretty sick. I don't think I've ever uh, summoned Exodia in this game before. You know, I've played this game a fair few times, but I've never gotten all that far in it. TBH, so... If we end up doing a playthrough of this game at any point, there's going to be a lot that I just never saw or don't really know about. Now let's take a closer look at some of the other details and rules for dueling. Uh, not yet, sadly. <laughs> First, you should be aware that there's a limit to the number of cards that can be placed on the field. Turns out there's a lot of fucking rules, man. <laughs> Here's a situation in which several monsters have been summoned to the field. Yup. This play shows how many monsters you have in play of the field at the moment. Each duelist can only place five monsters. Any attempt to summon a monster that exceeds the aforementioned limit. Yup, yup, yup. Oh no, it died! <laughs> Likewise, only five spell cards can be placed. You should take care to leave a summon area open so you won't find yourself in a situation where you're unable to play a key card. You just make your whole entire deck Exodia. Summoning power points are required in order to summon a monster. At the outside of a duel, each Cholus has four. Yep, we talked about that already. Hence, bringing a level four monster into play at the start of a turn. Yep, we've, we've literally seen this exact scene play out like six times now. We now have zero. We use up the total available points. Summoning power points spent in this manner will gradually recover as time passes. At the beginning of your turn, three points will be added. Hey, there's the baby dragon. The cute one. Yep, we got three points now. And then next turn, we'd have six, and then nine, and then 12. However, you will not be able to accumulate over 12 points. Five card deck only, Exodia? I'm fairly certain you have to have a minimum number of cards, do you not? Like, I don't think you can have a deck smaller than, what, 40 or something? 30, maybe? Even in a situation where the addition of points would exceed 12 points, you will not gain beyond this amount. And we're still at 12. Imagine that. What is up with these pineapple pizza emojis? Y'all gross as fuck. <laughs> Some monster spell cards can significantly help or hinder recovery. Summoning power points. Use these to your best advantage. Now let's talk about spell cards and what happens in battle. When placed face down and unused, your opponent will not be able to tell whether you have a spell or a monster card in play. Like monster cards, spell cards can be attacked and can initiate. Screw the rules, I have money, said Okai. <laughs> I mean, that's very, very said Okai of you, yes. <laughs> the face up monster card is yours. Your opponent has a spell card. When a spell card is attacked by a monster, it's easily destroyed. See, in my opinion, it should be triggered whenever you attack a spell card, right? You'll spam for day. I mean, I can just ban emoji spam. Like, <laughs> now you have a face down monster card. In monster versus monster battles, face down monsters will turn face up. Here's what happens with spell cards. Gary just got bopped by Katie because he was meowing. Well, I mean, I don't blame her, man. Gary's annoying as shit. <laughs> I, I love both of our cats, but he meows so much and so loud. It's like one of those obnoxious meows, too. Like, not a not a quiet cute one or whatever. It's like, fucking look at me now, bitch. That's his meow. It's terrible. <laughs> Spells are destroyed. Monsters stay face down. Spells can't be used to identify monsters. It's from Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridge. I've never seen it. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. When a spell card attacks a monster, the spell card disappears. Yup. Don't attack monsters with spell cards or vice versa. Got it. And when a face down card is attacked by a spell card, guess what, guys? It's fucking destroyed. <laughs> you don't attack monsters with spell cards. Period. Now we'll take a look at what happens when your spell card attacks the opponent's spell card. The rules differ for those applied when battling a monster. First, let's see what happens when you attack an opponent's face-up spell card. Fuck. <laughs> Alright, their card disappears. Cool. 
And now what happens when it's a face down spell card? It disappears. And our card triggers? Okay. Okay. So it activates our card. Alright, fair enough. She's scared of him and run away because he's intimidating, but when he's meowing, she's like, shut up, bitch. Terrain effects. Jesus, man, there's so much to this game. I don't... <laughs> so many, like, specific rules and shit. Right now, the Celtic Guardian is in a space where the terrain has no effect. Just basic terrain. The result is that both the attack and defense factors remain at their usual state. Now let's move the monster card to a meadow space. He gets bonus. Yep. Bridge is hilarious. My favorite one is Earth Woman. Where's the cleansing powder? What is that one from? It's great. That and Dragon Ball Z abridged. And then the SAO is a masterpiece. I've only ever seen some of Dragon Ball Z abridged. I've never seen any of the other ones. So it has increased movement ability too. So it can move two spaces instead of one. Yay! Face down cards do not get bonuses. Got it. Dragon Ball Z. We don't have that. Use soap. <laughs> what the hell is soap? <laughs> is that a brick of animal fat? I mean, pretty close. Brick of animal fat with some lime mixed in, you know? Stir it up, cook it a little bit maybe. <laughs> yeah, we got dark terrain spaces now, guys. The the terrain is different this time. It's it's dark instead of grass, you see. And and when it's dark and not grass, different creatures get different effects or or negative effects depending on the card. <laughs> All right, we'll learn this shit as we go. It's fine. Oh, fuck, yeah. Okay, we also have Labyrinth cards. Most cards can't move through Labyrinths, but there are special cards that can, like Wall Shadow. Flame Swordsman can attack into the Labyrinth, but can't move into the Labyrinth. Got it. That sounds awesome, Chomp. Ah, oh, that doesn't taste anything like you described. What the fuck? I obviously need to watch more abridged. That's what I'm uh that's what I'm getting from this. Crush Train can be entered with no resistance and has no positive or negative effects on most monsters. However, this area is infected with a plague that will attack and destroy powerful monsters. Specifically, any monster with an attack of 1500 or more will be immediately destroyed. A monster is summoned in the crush space, moves into a crush space, is located in a space that is transformed into a crush space, or is in a crush space when either of you or your opponent's turns end. That's a lot of crush, man. Since the Celtic Guardian only has an attack of 1400, he'll be fine. Rue, if you like a bridge, check out Slick Goku. What the hell is Slick Goku? Flame Swordsman is more powerful, so if it moves in, it dies. Bye bye, Flame Swordsman. It was nice knowing ya, bruh. Get turned to dust. The effect of a crush space is deadly. In short, if you find your monster moving to crush space by means such as teleportation, you could avoid destruction by immediately moving out of the space. Since the crush space is activated by the attack level, a leader which doesn't have any attack or a spell can move normally in these spaces. Okay. The mark of a good duelist is how well he or she can use the terrain to his or her advantage. Makes sense, bruh. Spell binding is when you can't move because of a spell. We kind of saw that with the dragon earlier. I feel like you could have talked about that kind of at the same time. Saved us some text. Turn count for a spell binding begins on the turn following the actual casting of the spell. So if a card is spellbound for one turn, it won't be able to move in the next turn and regains movement the turn following. It's Goku. If Goku grew up in the hood, it's became so much more though. So wait, is it like a parody series or something then? There are situations in which spellbinding can last more than one turn. In fact, there's a very dangerous condition, eternal spellbinding, which doesn't release the bound card no matter how many turns may pass. Uh, under this condition, the Celtic Guardian will not be able to move no matter how many times you declare that your turn is in. So the number of turns remaining until the card is able to move being displayed and infinity mark is displayed instead. I promise we'll play the game eventually. It's very difficult to break an eternal spellbinding. There are only a few monsters and spells that have that capability. Aside from the aforementioned, the only other way to free a monster from a spellbinding is to destroy it. Now let's take a look at the most common form of spellbinding, the attribute binding. Deep breath. 
We got a parrot dragon. The parrot dragon has an ability or something. I don't know. I'm not paying fucking attention. The advantage and disadvantages of attributes are displayed respectively during battle. Let's see what happens when the Celtic Guardian attacks. It'd be nice if it, like, told us who has an advantage or disadvantage or whatever. The weaker Celtic Guardian is destroyed, however, the opposing Paradragon is now spellbound. In this manner, a monster for a lower attribute that survives the battle is spellbound in the turn that follows. The rule also applies even if both monsters survive the battle, as in a case where a monster is unable to destroy an opposing monster. Attribute difference can be effective when using a weak monster to render a stronger monster immobile. Okay, I could see that uh, being useful in some situations, right? Like giving up a monster card to stop their monster card from being able to move. The opponent's powerful monster is in pursuit. You don't have any surprises up your sleeve, and your leader is isolated, creating a dangerous situation. Even under such desperate circumstances, a good duelist will bide for time, believing in the summoned monsters and the chance of drawing a card that could turn the tide of battle. Your belief in the luck of the draw could be the key to winning a battle. Among duelists, this belief is referred to as the destiny draw. Depending on how desperate a situation is and how gifted you are as a duelist, you may be granted the opportunity to attempt a destiny draw. Looks like victory may smile on you. This is your chance to draw the card that could turn the tide against your enemy. The destiny draw opportunity is signaled by flashing the area that is normally used for indi to, to, to indicate that you can summon a monster from your hand. Okay. Drawing when this condition is indicated will usually result in the drawing of a card that will help you in your current predicament. Try drawing a card now. Slick Goku is Slick Goku. He exists as an alternate Goku in the Slick Verse. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Take a look at the last card you drew. The card on the far right. Ah, uh, look at that card. 2000, 2000. So powerful. Destiny draw is luck and don't ex plan on it happening. Yeah, you can't draw more than five at a time. And if you're low on cards, you won't get a destiny draw. Luck is always part of the game. Got it. Cards have rank. Okay. Highly ranked card will demonstrate the special powers unique to its nature when the card becomes a leader. Take a look at a Dark Magician rank field marshal thing. God damn it, game. <laughs> At this rank, this card's special powers are extended support range, increased strength for same type friendlies, and weakens specifics enemy type. Let's take a look at your opponent's leader. Legit, that is the lore he originally is from the 2GS universe? What is 2GS? Bro, you done lost me. I don't watch all this parody shit. I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> Enough with the tutorial game. We gotta be getting close, man. There can't be that many more things that it needs to teach us, right? Like... Baby Dragon can turn our approaching cards face up. Cool, cool. There we go. That pretty much covers the rules of dueling. When it said, like, do you want to do a practice match? I thought we would do a practice match, not just sit through 30 minutes of text. <laughs> Holy shit, bruh. It's a bunch of enemies turned into rap parodies? That sounds kind of interesting. Let's select a deck to duel with. It is important that you feel the vibrations of a deck leader. The minute uh, resonating in the ring, the cards themselves draw their power from the energies of the Ancient Ones. The deck leader acts as an intermediate between the Ancient Ones and the deck wielder. It is essential that you select a card leader whose rhythm matches the stirrings of your soul. Here are several dicks from which to choose. Dicks? Uh, <laughs> Freudian slip, anyone? No. <laughs> There are several decks from which to choose. Give it some serious thought and make your selection. Choose carefully for the deck you select will guide the destiny of your duels. Jesus fuck, thank you game. Are we done yet? Is it over? It's over. Alright, so we have Twin-Headed Behemoth, Behemoth as an option. We have Creole. And we have Injection Fairy Lily as our options. Uh, any, 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 uh, any preferences, chat? I'm kind of partial to Twin-Headed Behemoth, but I don't really know. Can we, like, if we click on one, I'm scared, like, 
if we click on it, it'll just pick it, right? I would like to see what abilities they have or whatever, but I don't know if it'll let us do that. Rusan Behemoth as well. How do you feel, Nate, Noodle, whoever else is around? Anybody have any uh any other preferences? Or are we just gonna we just gonna go for the Behemoth? You find them funny, Nate? You suggest the high school DXD 2GS parody? That and their big Sword Art Online crossover one? I've never even watched High School DXD. You were looking at Squishmallows? Of course you were. <laughs> You just agree with Rue? You don't even know what the question was, do you? You're just you're just agreeing with Rue because it's Rue? Fair enough, fair enough. So, I mean, that's two votes for Twin Headed Behemoth. I think we're doing... It's two to one now, Nate. I don't know, man. You liking the fairy, though? You just like the fairy because of the uh, nurse cosplay there. <laughs> Your soulmates? Wow. I feel left out. All right, if we, if we click start, is it just going to pick it? Yeah, it's just gonna pick it. Didn't even have a, uh, a chance to look at abilities or attributes or any shit like that. It actually has a good ref effect, if you recall correctly. Well, it was two to one, so. <laughs> too late. Too late. Hopefully, the behemoth has one, too. A decent one. So, Nate has a nurse kink, huh? He probably does. If he doesn't, I do. I mean, if he does, I do, too. I mean, who doesn't have a nurse kink, though, at the end of the day, you know? <laughs> so that's the effect of the Celtic Red Rose cards. Looks like there's some truth to the rumor that Red Rose cards are capable of time transformation. Who the fuck is that? Oh, shit. It's Seto. Seto be coming. Not like that, though. Uh, anyways, it's been some time since the Battle of Barnet, old one. Barnet? I don't know. You like Fairy's Noodle? It's too late now. You should have checked the options before you just automatically agreed with Rue. Rose and Gruz, what brings you here? Only a member of the Rose Crusaders may call me by that name. If you may recall, I told you once before that you may only address me as Seto. Or does memory fail you, old man? <laughs> and you? You must be the dreaded Rose Duelist. I must admit, there's a certain aura of power emanating from you. I believe an introduction is in order. I am Seto, leader of the Rose Crusaders. There are members of our little group who prefer to call me by the name of C. Rose and Gruz. You can live without it. It's such a basic one, you know? Yeah, it's a basic one, but like, dude, they be hot though. <laughs> like, not not like the real life nurse outfit. Although, like, I don't know. Some girls can pull off scrubs too, you know what I mean? Or guys, if you're into that thing. But like the, the stereotypical sexy nurse outfit though, that's pretty hot. If you remember right, it's a card that got banned in tabletop because it was part of a broken combo. Yeah, but tabletop and this game are way different from each other. Like, completely different. I didn't know what we were doing. You were looking at Squishmallows. You could have checked before you just, like, fucking pick, though. Ask you again what brings you here, Seto. Mind your manners, old man. I mean, he's being kind of nice to you. I don't know, man. What else would bring me here? I've come for the Red Rose cards. Hey, Simon, go suck your own ego, you dick. <laughs> Squeeze. There's one named Chewie. Combined with the transport powers of the White Rose cards. You aren't thinking of attempting the Forbidden Rose summoning, are you? They be summoning Rose. Fucking Doctor Who crossover time, boy. Let's go. So then the Red Rose cards must never fall into your evil hands. Card sorcery taps into the power of the Ancient Ones. By their very nature, each card is a double-edged sword that can cut both ways. The Rose cards alone harness tremendous power. There's no telling what horrors one might unleash to the world by combining both red and white. Uh, bruh. I will sacrifice my own life if need be to prevent any from uttering the spell of doom. So is that, can I, can I do that then? Power over all, Druid legend has twisted the meaning of these cards. We Rose Crusaders have sworn to create a utopia free from the ravages of war. We intend to accomplish this with the power of the cards. We're going to murder everyone so that we can have peace. <laughs> We shall do so by extending the rule of Richard III throughout the known world. Fucking guys, man. I mean, yeah, they're hot, but come on, the videos are so exaggerated. That's just porn in general, though, man. <laughs> like, what porn isn't exaggerated? Unless we're talking, like, homemade porn or whatever. By the way, it was clever of you to form a circle of red roses within the white rose barrier to summon the rose duelist. 
but you are foolish to come alone. This area is surrounded, and if you wish to leave with your life, you will do so only by handing over the Red Rose cards. Are you fool enough to actually believe the Red Rose cards would remain here in my possession? Right after the summoning, I had the cards dispersed among our best duelists to keep them from your tainted hands. Then you leave me with but one option. I shall enlist the aid of your precious Rose duelist. You take leave of your senses, Seto. <laughs> and you speak too soon, old man. Heed my words, duelist. You wish to return to your proper time period. You require 16 cards of the Red and White Roses. The red and white positions must be laid out in reverse of the summoning order to send you home. You know the spell? Since you need the 16 rose cards just as much as we do, I propose a partnership. Help us gather the cards, and I shall guarantee your return after we've achieved our ultimate goal. So guys, which side are we going to take in this battle? An absurd proposal. Do you think that the honorable stream would even lend an ear to your ridiculous proposal? We take in, we take in Seto's side or Simon's side, dude? Seto wants to take over the world by force so that there can be peace. Simon just doesn't want Seto to do that. <laughs> so you want us to go with the with the guys that are trying to... So you mean Seto? Alright, so you want us to be uh, warmongers. We got one vote for warmongering. Destroy the world. <laughs> wait, wait, did you mean Seto when you were saying... <laughs> so you got him backwards? So you want us to go with the red roses? No, we go with the good guys. <laughs> oh god. Simon's side has eight of the red rose cards, while my side, the Rose Crusader, has possession of the eight white rose cards. As the numbers are even, simple arithmetic indicates that you could side with either of us. But I'm sure you'll take into account who's winning this war. After all, who was desperate enough to summon you in the first place? I think it's quite clear which side is better positioned to send you home. Stream, heed not the words of this this power hungry lunatic. <laughs> nah, screw Seto. Should have seen me as I did. I got so confused. Sorry, Rue. We all get confused, man. Must you resort to name calling? I'm hurt. <laughs> Fucking Seto, dude. Go suck your own dick, Seto. Hmm. I'll tell you what. Why don't we leave the decision to our dear duelist? After all, Simon, the duelist future is not for us to decide now, is it? Well, yes, but. Splendid! In keeping with the tradition of the old temple gardens, I offer you a choice, Duelist. Here are two roses. The white represents me, and the red for old Simon here. For the sake of justice, please choose the red rose. Stand by my side, Duelist. Choose the white rose. So we go in red. Everyone wants us to go red. So we go white then, just because y'all want red, right? <laughs> oh. See, this is semi-difficult because the Red and White Rose are used in one of your favorite series and they're both kind of the bad guys. Isn't it based off a semi-true historical event? The whole War of the Roses or whatever? Stream, I will kill you. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes, it is. Alright, we're going red, obviously. We're going red. I'm just fucking with y'all. How disappointing. Oh well, you made your choice and I respect that. For now, I will guarantee your safe passage until you've met with Yugi. After all, I don't want our little game to end too quickly. That wouldn't be sporting. I look forward to the day when we meet again, Duelist. Until then... Bruh. <laughs> Alright. 48 minutes in and we're finally getting a look at uh, the map and shit. The French Empire. Breasts of your mom. Or something. I don't know. I didn't see what it said. <laughs> Stream, I present Prince Yugi, last Prince of Lancaster, a true Welshman and the hope of who, of we who call ourselves Celts. My lord, may I present Stream, the Rose Duelist. You serve us well, Simon. My mother was wise in summoning you from Scotland. You honor me, sire. Duelist, I am Yugi. Actually, Henry Tudor is my name, but I find it tiresome. You may call me Yugi. What guy walks around with the name Henry Tudor? It was like, you know what? I'm saying Henry Tudor all the time, Prince Henry Tudor at that, it's a bit much. What could y'all call me instead? Just Henry? Nah, nah, that's too much. Tudor? Just Tudor? Nah, 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 nope, nope, that's too, that's too hard too. You know what? Yugi. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the fucking name we're going with. Yugi. Yeah, basically what they did is they took like this real life war that happened or whatever. 
replaced the characters with anime characters, and uh, then added magic dueling monsters into the mix just for the hell of it. <laughs> sure, Simon explained our situation, but it's only right that I request your services myself. I need you to return to England and put an end to the threat of the Rose Crusaders. Their white rose cards form a barrier that prevents my armies from setting foot on British soil. Although we Celts have the red rose cards, we are but inheritors who are unable to wield their full power. In the hopes of reversing our fortunes, we gambled on a Druid legend that spoke of a rose duelist. According to the same legend, one must use a deck whose cost is lower than an opponent's to capture a rose card of another color. I believe that it is important that you keep this in mind. The cost of your deck should not exceed the cost of your opponent's deck. I would like you to note that our resources have been pressed to the limit, requiring us to invade England by August. My troops will land in Milford Haven, Wales, and march on to the face to face the enemy at Bosworth Fields. Having all the Rose Crusaders out of commission by this time would be ideal, but as that might prove difficult, any reduction of their force would be appreciated. Right then, let us part company and reunite in Bosworth. Simon will provide you with the details as to where and when we'll meet once more. Tudor? Like T-O-O-T-E-R? No, I wasn't talking to you, Noodle. You're the only tutor I know. Because <laughs> you're always tooting, you know? Like, all the time. <laughs> Yay! Choose a destination. Okay, so we can go to Chester or Tewksbury. Tewksbury. I mean, Chester is a hell of a lot easier to say. DC 960, DC 854, so we should probably go to that one. Our deck is uh, 825. Can we check our deck now? We can. We can also save. You know what? I'm going to save real quick, just so we never have to go through all that again. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty much time for, an, uh, for a break too, isn't it? Holy fuck, dude. We're going to... We'll check our deck real quick before we, before we take a short break. Help options. Oh, we can finally get into the options now, too. And that's all the options there are. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the one weird thing about, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! games, man. Not the options, but that the, the dueling is, like, never how it is in the actual card game. I don't know why they always, like, fuck it up. They never just leave it normal. It's weird as shit, but whatever. All right, so this is our chest. These are the cards that we own. And this is our deck. These are the cards that we're actually using. Um, right now, we're using all of our cards, so there's not, like, shit for us to do. We can also have uh, a couple different decks. So, I don't know. How do we switch? Start. Okay, so we can have up to three different decks built as well. Good to know. There's a cat named Karina. Dress up as Stacy the Squid. You want Stacy so bad? I want Stacy's mom so bad. Because Stacy's mom has got it going on. <laughs> She's all I want. And I've waited for so long. Stacy, can't you see? You're just not the girl for me. I know I might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom, man. I'm sorry, Noodle. I, just, I, I had to tell you sooner or later. But alright, jokes aside. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> We're gonna take a quick break, guys. Um uh, don't worry, we're actually gonna play a little bit of the game before we get off. I don't care if we run late, we're playing this fucking game a little bit, <laughs> not just doing the fucking tutorial. So we're gonna take the ad break, it'll only be a couple minutes, and then we'll be back with the with 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 some actual gameplay. <laughs> Do you have to, like, be touching the obstacle? I'm trying to jump before it, because, you know, you would think you would kind of need to build up your... I think I'm out of turbo. Or no. Okay, I have turbo. It's just taking a while to... to. I don't know how this works. <laughs> Hold on. What am I doing wrong? When facing a low-lying obstacle, you can jump over it while running toward the snake. Press circle to jump. Okay, this is the snake, right? This here, that's a snake. Looks like a snake. You have to... Okay, so you don't need to be running. You just need to be, like, pressing up against it. And even then, it doesn't always work. Perfect. Yeah, great game, guys. This is going well. You can ask your teammates for help by performing a call-out. Aim at a region where you wish your teammates to focus and press R3. Try it now. Over there. 
<laughs> this is so cringy, man. This is the, the type of game that I imagine parents were buying their kids when they didn't want their kids to be playing, like, actual shooters and whatnot. Um, I, I admit I did not read the message. Oh, you can also use L3 to go crouch or, or stand, so that's that's nice. Tell one of your teammates to move up by performing a team command. Aim at a teammate until the crosshairs are green and press R3 to tell him to move up to the next bunker. Oh, you have to aim at your teammate. Okay. Cool. Okay. Tell all of your teammates to attack by holding down R3 for at least two seconds. Tell your teammates to attack. Uh, attack that thing. That's my job. <laughs> oh, no. Press the left or right directional buttons to glance around without affecting your aim. Yep, we tried that earlier. Cool. When you hit, get hit with a paintball, you will sometimes have the opportunity to cheat. When the cheat meter appears, wait for the glowing cursor to enter the green area of the meter and press X. If successful, you'd be able to continue playing. If not, you could be eliminated or even punished for cheating. I mean, cheaters never win, right? Perform a successful cheat. Hello! We're back. Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> Let's uh fight fucking Weevil Underwood, shall we? Hee hee hee. So you're the legendary Rose Duelist. Prepare to face the sting of my insect deck. You're a piece of shit, Weevil. No one cares. <laughs> We're gonna get fucking wrecked, I know it. And then I'm gonna feel like shit. Well, that was quick. I said like a two minute break, man. It's been roughly two minutes, give or take. Stream's been live for one hour. Zero minutes and 39 seconds. Um, okay, so we can R1, that's our graveyard. L1 are options. That's surrender. What's start do? End turn. Alright, well, we've already ended our fucking turn, so that's good. <laughs> we had first move and we did nothing. This is going excellent. <laughs> uh triangle is detail, okay. Power-up cards are Horn of Light, Dragon Treasure, Gust Fan, and Paralyzing Potion, and we have no abilities at all. Uh, that's good. All right, let's summon. Let's summon a fucking card since we done fucked up. But that means we have seven now, so we can actually summon something a little bit more powerful. Uh, I don't know any of the types here. You have an effect. There should be a way to triangle. Special info. Flip. When this card is flipped face up, all cards located in C terrain are destroyed. Very cool effect, but... We do not have any sea terrain here. Honestly, I think we just go with our strongest card and get the crawling dragon down. Yeah, summon him. And then we'll move him forward. Uh, does he get powered up or anything in this terrain? He does not. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. We'll move him forward. And then we might as well move ourselves away from, away from the creatures a little bit too. So we don't get like fucking attacked or anything like that. Um, and then I guess we just end our turn there. Weevil? More like wiener. <laughs> he's a fucking wiener, guys. I didn't see. What was their attack power? 1650? Fuck, dude. Uh, well, that fucking sucks. Dude's got 1650s off the bat. I mean, it helps that he gets, like, terrain bonuses and shit. I don't think we're getting any terrain bonuses against Weevil. You can do it. Thanks, Nate. I need that, man. Especially after losing our first card already. The only dude we had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come up to Lehman. <laughs> Mon. Made me think of the Hurricane Katrina. More like Hurricane Tortilla. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh... Okay, what do we have? Do we have anything that can take that on? Uh, okay, so this dude can. The the Great Bill. And it actually gets a bit of a bonus, too. So we can go ahead and kill his one card with that. That's probably a decent idea. And it's only a summon of four. So we won't have, like, no power next time. So summon. And then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's 1650. So we can kill it. And now that we're face up, we also get bonus movement with him which is cool i guess you know a little, a little bit of that bonus movement man always always nice it was a vine that should be explanation enough i didn't watch vine so i mean yeah 
Duck wins. Duck always wins, man. Duck for the win. I mean, don't ducks, like, eat bugs and shit in real life, too? Like, that dude looked like an overgrown bug. I'm sure the duck just wanted a nice little snacky snack, you know? Eat him up, boy. The Great Bill. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all we can do. We don't have any... anything else, really, so... Uh, no. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could move. If we move forward one... Then we can... Have more space for, like, trap cards and shit like that. I'm assuming that one that's, uh, face down the de defense-style position is probably some sort of magic card or some shit. I'm assuming? I don't really know that. I'm just guessing here. Uh, what is your effect, bro? Weakens an opposing enemy by 300 points when destroyed in battle. Okay. So that's not bad. We could put this face down in defense mode. And use it to protect ourselves. Well, you know what, though? Hold on, go back. I actually want to summon it here. Yes, I want to summon it here because I'm going to move over. Because um, we're going to move this here. And then we're going to move you to come up here like so. And hopefully that card is not stronger than our duck bill. If it is, then I mean, I guess we just got to... Just got to deal with it. Like... Alright, the fact that he's put that one, like, back so far probably means that that's also a, uh, weak card. And 2100! What the fuck, bro? Jesus. This dude be strong as fuck. The hunter spider? What the fuck, dude? How does a spider kill a duck? <laughs> that's one hell of a fucking duck. Maybe not, since he just moved that other card up. Uh, hmm... All right, did we get anything that can possibly take that on? Not even fucking close. All right, so then what we do in that situation, we have Fairy Dragon. That thing has a lot of fucking health. We just put some shit down to keep our, to keep our hand kind of low. Three, so we'll have five next turn, which is a decent summon. And then we put it again in defense mode. And then, honestly, I think we just kind of hide here where we're at right now. Um, and end turn. We really need to get something, like, that can attack a little bit. But, like, yeah. Is, uh, is fusion a thing in this game? I don't remember. I know, I know fusion is a thing in a few different Yu-Gi-Oh, like, fucking console games or whatever. But I don't remember if it is in this one. Basically, it's not a mechanic in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, or at least it wasn't originally, but you can take, like, two cards and, and mix them together to make more powerful cards or, or power up existing ones or whatever. And, yeah, okay, you got a, you got a weird web attack thing. Got it. <laughs> Burn the spider, bitch. I wish it was that easy. I think we done lost this match, man, though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Oh, 2300, but it has a summon of seven. So, five, six, seven, eight. So we'd have eight next turn. So I can't really do anything this turn, but fucking move. Um, Because he can probably move too, right? Yeah, he's got the movement thing. So we'll come over here, I guess, which does kind of limit our, our summoning spaces. But, uh... Yeah, that's kind of all we can do. We need to we need to bide some time so we can get some more summoning ability. See the way that if you watch very closely when the opponents take in their turn, they uh they like actually kind of click up more than one card at a time, and that's in other games, Yu-Gi-Oh games that I've played. That's how you fuse two together. So I'm thinking, I think I'm thinking fusion is a thing here. Okay, and that should weaken you, right? Because it was destroyed in battle? Yeah! Get wrecked, bitch! Ooh, okay, you're spreading out a little bit. Weird. Not really what I expected you to do, not gonna lie. Uh, we're going to summon Big Boy here now. Um, 
I guess it doesn't matter which spot we go in. Probably here. And then we'll summon Big Boy. Get you down. And then attack. And we'll win that one for sure. We don't need to we don't need to watch the the thing. Or do you guys want to see do you guys like seeing the animations or do you want to skip the animations? I I go back and forth on that sort of thing to be honest. Cuz it's kind of neat to see like the the effects, the moves of all the different cards, but like at the same time sometimes I just want to get through it a little bit faster, you know what I mean? But uh look at that. There you go. We 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 be burning the spider, bro. <laughs> Kinda. I mean, like, he didn't go up in flames, which would have been nice, but those were those were kind of fire-esque balls that we were shooting out, right? <laughs> um, and then I guess it'd probably be a decent idea to at least get behind our attacker um, so we have something kind of defending us, and we'll end our turn. This dude's got so many cards on the fucking field, man. Holy fuck. All right, he's running away, though. That's a good sign. The fact that he's running that card away means that it's probably weaker than whatever we have out. Um, uh, we really don't have anything good, do we? We can put... You were like, hey, Noodle, thank you so much for the uh, five bits, love. I appreciate it. Tons. Um, we could put you down just so we have, like, another card to help defend. To kind of uh, eke out his attacks and shit like that. And that'll give us five summoning points next turn. So that's... We'll do that, I guess. Um, but if he attacks that, he's definitely going to kill it. Hold on. Ooh, okay. Because you can only move... We can move you forward. So that dude... That dude could only move, like, two at max, right? So what we're... We're just going to... We're just gonna put it here. I don't know, I'm a little bit worried about like, if that card comes up to our dude, how are we going to defend ourselves? The one that's on the side of my my dragon boy. But uh, I guess, I guess we're just gonna have to deal with that. We could move him away one more spot, but like, fuck, I don't wanna do that. So call our turn there, I guess. Let's see what he's doing. Okay, he's still running away from our dragon. That's a good sign. He's putting that one in the defense um i don't trust the fact that he put that in defense i'm not gonna lie but first off what did we get that we could summon anything decent uh not particularly we could go for 1500 i mean that's not like super weak spellcaster dragon warrior fish reptile I mean, we should summon something Get another one down in defense position just to cover our asses a little bit, maybe. Three. That would take us down to two. That would give us five again. I'm hoping to get another attacker on the field is really what I want. Yeah, I think... I guess we'll just get another defender on the field for the time being. Some to kind of cover our asses a little bit. And then we'll continue marching forward. I'm tempted to destroy that, but I'm worried that it might be, like, a super high defense monster. So I think we're just going to continue our march. Call it a day. Okay, so he's coming up toward us. Okay, that's, that's actually kind of what I wanted you to do, because I wanted to see what it was. 1100, but it does have an effect. So we'll have to check what that effect is before we fight it. But we do have creatures strong enough to destroy that. Kind of annoying that our uh, our dragon totally could have destroyed it and, and what we didn't. But I guess it is what it is. What do you have now? You have Goddess of the Third Eye or whatever. What's your attack again? 1100. Okay. I think you might get a bonus when we put you down. But I, I'm not sure. What type are you? See, like, you're light. Um. How one option? No, that's option. Buh, 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 buh. Uh, okay. We'll play it safe, right? Insect, green. 
seem I think the green ones get a fucking bonus. I just don't want to put that one down and then get fucked by not having it be good enough to do anything, you know? Also, what's your effect? While this card is face up in the defense position, all wind monsters gain a 500 point power bonus. Bruh. You better take off, guys. 930 classes are killer enough without insomnia kicking my ass. Oh, dude, I get that 100%. No worries. Take some time off, man. Or go to bed or whatever. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Point is, have a good night, Rue. We'll talk to you tomorrow or, or not tomorrow. Tomorrow we won't be streaming. We'll talk to you next time. Next time that we stream. <laughs> have a good night, man. Uh, fuck it. Let's just put down... I mean, we have to learn, right? We got to learn. So we're just going to put you down. Okay. It did not... It did not get a power up when we did that. That's Im that's 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 important to know. But we'll leave it there. That's stronger than that, so it won't be able to uh it won't be able to destroy it. This one here looks like it's trying to come around though. Let's go ahead and attack this defense one, which thankfully we can kill. Dope. Dope as shit. All right. Perfect. So that means now we're putting some pressure on him, which is really good. That'll that'll help uh scare him away from us a little bit. And let us inflict, like, direct damage unless he starts running away. So, that's good. Was your question ignored? Uh, oh, oh, uh, friend fund for tomorrow? Is that what your your question was? I mean, you can use your money to buy a friend. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. I don't, I don't have new friend, uh, plushy friend money. What are you? Some sort of worm? A worm with a thousand attack. Okay, so... Not very high. We can probably deal with that easily enough, I would imagine. But he is—he is encroaching on us, though. That's—that's that's important. Uh, get fuck nerd. <laughs> I just realized our two cards like fucking match and attack and defense and whatnot. Ooh, okay, he's running back a little bit. First things first, what did we draw? Dragon treasure? Increase the power of dragon and sea serpent monsters by 500 points. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're a dragon. You're a dragon. Um, Can we, I don't remember, can we summon a spell card and a monster or only one or the other? I think we can only do one or the other, right? So if that's the case, are you able to move twice? You can, and with an attack of a thousand, but we could take out that. Oh man. Okay. You know what? I think I think we just move back. Summon the spell card, because that'll also give us more points in case we get a real nice card, and then we flip it face up. Uh, it didn't trigger. Detail. Oh, do we have to, like, attach it to a dragon card or something? Did I just fuck up? I think I just fucked up. Uh, that's, that's rough, man. Um, well. Hmm. <laughs> All right, then. I guess end my turn. <laughs> I think, I think I just fucked up, guys. That might, that might hurt a little bit. Yeah, we're taking a hit. That's fine. I knew we were going to take a hit. That's, that's cool. I can, I can deal with that. You're going into defense. That's, yeah, ex as expected. Oh, destroying his own card to run away from us. That's fine. Go ahead and do that. All right, now it's our turn again. Uh, <laughs> what do we got? Got Wing Beast, Fairy, Spellcaster, Fish, and Reptile. Um... What's your... Your attack is shit. So I can actually use you. Uh, go away from that. Oh, wait. Now it's working. 1,600. Oh, but you are also... No, wait. You're an insect. Oh, wait. Is it a... Something level? What? Why, why, why did you go up? I'm confused. You didn't go up. And you're a dragon. 
I am very confused. I don't know. Whatever. Point is, go ahead and attack that one with that. Because uh, that'll definitely kill him. Problem solved there. I'm so fucking confused. Why did his creature get... Because, like, I'm a, I'm a dragon, right? Oh, shit. I'm spellbound. I didn't expect that, but honestly, like, fine. Power up card. Dragon treasure. And what about you? Power up card. Paralyzing potion. Gust fan. Crush card. Insect armor. Yeah. That's not listed on one for you. What the fuck? Uh, whatever. We'll move you up here, I guess. Because I, I done fucked up with that. And then we just need something down for a little bit of defense. Uh... Or, you know what, let's move you back here, actually, and then put something down for defense, like, over here, because I kind of want to try to attach that card to my card. Uh, I don't know. What's the lowest summon that we have? You. You can go down. And in the defense position. And then we'll take you, and do we just go ahead and attack? I guess we just go ahead and attack. Well, what the fuck was that? Oh, he had an effect, didn't he? Destroy opposing enemy when this card is flipped face up in battle. Son of a bitch, he got us. <laughs> he fucking called our bluff, man. <laughs> he knew. He knew what was going to happen. Fuck, I knew I shouldn't have done that. I should have expected him to do something like that. Son of a bitch. All right. Uh, that's fine. Goblin secret remedy? Oh, life point recovery. Okay, fine. Um. Okay, what can we summon? Anything interesting at all? Wall of Illusion. What do you got for me? Returns enemy monster to opponent's deck for reshuffling when this card is flipped face up in battle. Okay, so we can basically do what he did to us. Um, before we do that, though, let's move you over to here. Move you to here. And then, what have we got? We got seven. We could summon any of these. We might as well just summon the one with the most damage output, right? Like, I don't see any reason to do anything else. Okay, so wait, is this one getting... Is this one getting a power-up because of the, the, the ground? Type down? Isn't that a bad thing? The type pointing down? I'm very confused about the whole type stuff. I'm not going to lie. Oh, normally it's 1,000 and 1,850. But because of its type, it's actually weaker. It's down to 500, 1,350. So whatever it shows here is with the advantages on the board. That's really good to know. Uh, wish I kind of knew that a little bit sooner, but whatever. We'll take it. And then, uh, why don't we go ahead and... What What are you, 950? Yeah, fuck, that dude's weak as shit. We'll move forward. And then... Call our turn there. Yeah, I kind of thought he might end up doing that, to be honest. <laughs> Because it, it was getting a little too close to, to being able to power him up. I wish I had known how that worked. So spell card. I'm guessing we had to overlay them or something. I thought with it being a magic card, we just had to flip it face up. But uh, obviously, that's not the way it works. Alright. Uh, what do we have to summon first and foremost? We have a baby dragon. Um, we do have that wall of illusion. We could take you and come over here, right? Oh, wait, the blade flies weaker now. Oh, because that's a wasteland tile. Bruh, okay, well, if that's the case then, then we just fucking murder him. And then we'll put something else. I was going to, like, move over and put, like, the, uh, the destroy the, the card... That flips this over sort of card down. 
the wall fiend, no, whatever the fuck it was called, I don't remember. I was gonna do something along those lines, but I guess we don't even need to. We kind of, not purposefully, but we kind of baited him into, <laughs> into playing into our hand there, man. Uh, okay, and then we want, I, I guess, just our next best attacker. Although, with that said, we could just put this down to try to conserve some more summoning points, hoping that we get another big card. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's put, let's put Baby Dragon down and then just put him in defense and hope for the best. And then the Armored Lizard will move up and call it a day there, I suppose. We're technically, we're technically winning, not by very much, and definitely not now. Holy fuck, 2400, okay. Well, that means I'm really glad to still have that wall dude down, or, or available, because we can try and use that to get rid of that big beastie. Uh, Jesus fuck, dude, okay, he's got another 2001 on the board. We need some stronger cards is what we need. <laughs> it really sucks that we fucking attacked that face down one that just destroyed whatever card. That was that was a bad move. I knew I should have just avoided it, but I thought we I thought we would be okay. 1700. That's with our attack up, but he's got 2000 though. You know what I mean? Like this dude this dude's got us beat here. Uh yeah, we have to... We have to just put you down. Returns enemy monster to opponent's deck. So it's not even destroyed, but it's better than... It's better than nothing, though. And then, uh... Put you like that. And then... Put you in defense, I guess. Fuck, and then that's still gonna end up leaving that one there, too. Oh, man, we're running out of summoning spaces, too, which is another way to fucking lose, which is, you know, scary as shit. Oh, good, he's doing a... Oh, no, he's throwing away a card. It wasn't even, like, a, a fusion or a power-up or anything. He just straight-up threw it away. You only draw one card per turn, though, right? Oh, wait, and we got him... We, we kind of did the same thing, where we baited him into a spot that makes him weaker. So we, if we have something that does over 1,500 damage, we can go ahead and destroy it now, too. Um, which we do. You have to think four-dimensionally. Yeah. Okay, so wait, what's his what's his attack? 1,500? Yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll go ahead and summon this bro. Ogre of the Black Shadow. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Fuck. It doesn't work that way. Because Ogre of the Black Shadow was also getting a bonus. Fuck me. Uh <laughs> Well that that fucking sucks. Um Seventeen hundred twenty four hundred, you have to think fourth dimensionally, my guy. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Fuck, I'm so mad. What other cards do we have in our hand? Yeah, I guess we didn't have anything else that could have even taken it out. Unless they get a power up in the wasteland. Um Cause I'm assuming as soon as I attack it, yeah, it'll go down to twelve hundred from the look of it. Which means my guy would just die. Fuck, okay, I guess we're just gonna put you in defense. It's all right, this is, this is a, a learning experience is what we got going on here still. And just keep running away from all of his cards and creatures and shit. Oh no, you do go back up to five every time. Okay, so it might be worth throwing away some of the weaker cards. And he did get the bonus right away. Okay, that's, again, learning experience. Good to know, good to know. So it's whatever tile you're fighting on is where the bonuses come from. Doesn't matter if you're, uh... If you're standing on a tile that gives you a bonus or not. Okay, so... What can we what can we summon? Um, I wanna... I'm guessing it's the final card that we play is the one that we actually get to keep. Um, 
So honestly, I just want to throw away like all these cards. <laughs> like <laughs> not all of them. I'll I'll do. I mean, we might as well. I mean, a level three for thirteen hundred is pretty decent. Oh wait, but that's because we're putting it on a on a wasteland tile. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so we probably want to throw away that one too. Throw away basically everything. Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yep, summon. Okay, never mind. Those ones fuse together. Um, so do those ones, apparently. Um, to make some shit card, but whatever. <laughs> it had an effect, though. Uh, you know what? Let's move you forward a little bit. Oh, never mind. Okay, trap activated, block attack. I mean, I wasn't attacking anything, but... You know, I guess it's good to have that gone. And then just, just go. I hate when there's fusion mechanics in the game because I don't know what cards can fuse with what. <laughs> and that's like how you get some really good fucking cards is by fusing shit. Oh, and he still stands there too. That's cool. The, the wall dude, even though, I mean, he's weak as shit. He's going to be destroyed right here, but still. That wastes another one of his turns, though. So I'll take it. Now we just gotta pray that we come up with something strong enough to destroy that. But at the same time, we have no summoning points left. So, like... I don't think that's gonna happen, you know? Uh, okay. Sky Dragon's decent, but... Not strong enough to take over that thing. Um, what's your effect, Psychic Kappa? Whenever damage is inflicted to life points in battle, the damage amount is reduced to zero. Uh, shit. What's your... You cost six. So do we... Huh. If we run away one more, he won't be able to attack us. And he'll be standing right there. And we could run away and then we could attack him. But if he's standing right here, there's not... We wouldn't have a card that could kill him. Um... I mean, we're gonna have... We have to run away. We don't really have a choice. And then... Summon... Let's see if this summons anything. And I guess you have more defense, so it'd be better to have you as the final piece. Yeah, sure. Yep, nope. Didn't do shit. That's... Fine. <laughs> uh, I think we're fucked. I'm not gonna lie, dude. <laughs> and he got a summon. Perfect. Cool. <laughs> I'm gonna Google real quick. Like, is there any way to know when two cards will work as a summon? Or, um, Duelist of the Roses. How to know when... Fusion, I mean, not summon. There's a fusion list, but that doesn't help much. Card Fusion FAQ. By Steve. Oh, okay, and this is based off of the old one, though. The, the PS1 fusion list from the other game, so that may or may not work. Hints and tips. Aqua plus dinosaur equals something. Dragon plus rock. Fuck, dude. <laughs> it's not particularly helpful, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, but if he comes over here, right, then he'll, his attack will go down. What can I summon? Anything decent at all? What is this? Mountain? Transform surrounding two space area into mountain terrain? That could be very nice for me. Uh, I should probably put you in defense, though. And then... Yeah, and then we'll, we'll use this. Thank you. 
and that's not how you activate. How the fuck do you activate a card? <laughs> I don't I don't know how the whole activation thing works. I missed that part in the 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 20 minute tutorial that we watched. Non-specific fusions. Aqua plus dinosaur, aqua plus rock, aqua plus sea, sea serpent, pyro warriors. Zombie, look at other fusions, warrior zombie, warrior rock. So there's just a bunch of like shit that you can do, man. Unlockables, card passwords, card lists, card fusions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can use codes like because the the uh, the fucking cards have like codes in, in real life on them, so you can use those to like summon them in the game or whatever. I think we're fucked, man. I'm not gonna lie. Noodle, thank you so much for the five more bits, love. You sent me a DM to ask about something before you forget again? What up? Oh. Uh. Yeah, I got you. I got you, fam. No worry. Okay, uh, I want to activate you. Do I just flip you up? I think I just flip you up, right? Do I have to like flip you up and move you? No, okay, good. Mountain terrain, give it to me, baby. All right, good, so now we got mountains. So you should be weak as shit comparatively. Can I summon something? Yes, thank you. My shit like mountains, bruh. Okay, but you're also getting a attack up. I need to remember that you're not actually that powerful. But you're still my most powerful card. I should probably just go ahead and summon you while I can. And it'll do damage to his life points in the meantime, too. Which, you fuck! Negate attack. Alright, you know what? That's probably okay. Um, and then his... Oh, man, I really don't want to be stuck in the corner, though. Yeah, we're not going to run into the corner. Fuck, as much as I I want to like get away from him, but at the same time, nah, I'm scared. <laughs> if I get stuck into the corner, it'll be too easy to lose by not having any, any uh, spaces, summoning spaces or whatever. So, not doing that. God, he's got so much shit on the field, though. Uh, of course you would go that way, you piece of shit. What was Psychic Kappa's ability again? I honestly don't even remember. I don't think it was anything worth note. Just one, two, three, four, five, six. So he has to have a fair few spell cards down. All right, uh, now at this point that you have to run away, like you don't really have a choice anymore. Um, you have 1,500. And my cards have, I mean, 1800's fine, I guess. And we can kind of keep you over here in this area to kind of help fight off shit, I guess. And then use our strong card to try and start fighting off his shit. I don't know, man. Ah, fuck, you're spellbound. I mean, that's fine. We'll live with that. And then move you forward. And then that's all we can do, I guess. Fuck. We have, like, no spell cards. We need some spell cards, man. Like, spells and traps and shit. What was that emoji that you sent? Noodle just shush? Why are you telling me to shush? You rude? <laughs> I didn't even notice that before. What'd you get? Uh, we have, like, nothing. Did we throw anything away? Dinosaur and beast. Dinosaur and beast, huh? Do those fuse together? Dinosaur plus... No. Dinosaur and beast do not. Dinosaur... I mean, we probably can't... Yeah, we can't trigger cards that don't work. What about beast, though? Beast and machine, beast and female? What? <laughs> just, just what? Um, can we just, like, throw away shit? Combo order. 
details. Just enter. Yeah, so we can't do shit. Like, we have to put down something. Let's just... I'm assuming it'll only cost us with whatever the final card down is. I just want to get rid of some of these weak guys. I guess. Whatever. Yeah, like, I don't even... I don't even want it, but... I just need to get some stuff out of my hand. Then you're still in... Yeah, you're still in the, the strong zones. So that's good. Let's get you moved up one, actually, too, so that you have a little bit more summoning spaces. There we go. We'll do, we'll do that for now. Call that a day. I guess. I don't know. Not putting any friend fund in our budget. What's wrong with you? I didn't know I had to buy you friends every time we go somewhere. I thought you were a grown woman with your own money, Noodle. Um, okay, what do we got now? We got a house? House of adhesive tape? What the fuck? What does that do? What's the disposable trap that triggers against a monster with attack of 1,000 or below and destroys it? Oh. So, I mean, that's kind of kind of weak sauce honestly we'll put it down because we need to get some more points and just cards in general so like go ahead and summon oh shit it still costs us points to do that i was kind of hoping it wouldn't but whatever i guess um and then you you can come over here maybe and you can go into defense mode there oh man there's so many i guess we're gonna have to even though that's gonna it's gonna hurt his attacking ability but we gotta start getting something up towards him to do stuff you know uh that cocoon just hatched or whatever it did it's probably strong as fuck now yo wait what I didn't see who's winning that. I'm winning that, but I'm spellbound in place. Fuck me. Okay. Well, I mean, you know what? Could be worse. I can't move for one turn, but at least I'm not dead. That's a big bonus. <laughs> I need to actually see what the fuck that thing does. I'm guessing every time it hatches, it becomes stronger. Pupa of Moth. Transforms into perfectly ultimate great moth if the card survives one turn in face up defense position after being flipped face up by the controlling player. Destroyed a battle card or survive as great moth in own summoning area other than current location. Uh, yeah, I think we're fucked, man. <laughs> oh, I don't know how we're gonna get through this one, man. Hey, did we get a. Oh, no, I thought it was Rebo. What about. So, can we summon like a. What's a dragon and a fiend do anything? Dragon and Fiend, only 1,500 attack. Um, what else do we have? Zombie? What about Dragon Zombie? Is that does a zombie dragon, but it's pretty weak. It's weaker than our lesser dragon. Um, dragon Fairy? Dragon Fairy does fuck all. Okay. Dragon Fiend did a weaker dragon. What about Fiend? Fiend and anything? Fiend and plant? No. Zombie just mix it with other shit. Fairy. Fairy. Does fairy mix with anything? None available. Unknown. Okay, that's a... That's a really helpful fucking list there, man. Uh, <laughs> let's go to Game FAQs. I bet you they got more info. Game FAQs. Of the Roses. Why? Why are you popping up ads and shit? I'm trying to search. Of the Roses. Go. Duelist of the Roses on PS2. Guide. Card guide. Card list. Deck leader. Fusion FAQ. That's kind of what I want. I just want to know how Fusion works. I don't necessarily want... To know, like, just the list of them all, you know?
Yeah, this just says uh, this just has a list of all of the combinations that you can do. Man, see that's what I hate about the fusion thing, like, you kind of just got to get lucky and hope for the best. <laughs> so the dragon's only that powerful because of where it's being summoned, which makes it even worse. Um, you're actually made worse because of where you're being summoned? Okay, so what's your normal details then? 1600? That's not too bad. Um, we could summon you and move you over. We don't know how strong his other cards are. But it seems like that's probably the best thing that we got right now. Yeah. So let's get rid of a couple cards and then get you up. Fuck it, go. And that was a that was a weak mix if I remember correctly. Kimori Dragon? Well, it's probably getting a bonus because of where where it was. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it was actually like a, a good option for us. I think it was just where it was was helping it out. Um Okay, end our turn there, I guess. How strong is this dude gonna end up being? The ultimate moth bro. Probably strong as shit, I'm not gonna lie. He's sitting real pretty right now. 1350? I mean, he does have home field advantage here. Holy shit, wait, is he trying to become even more powerful? What's he going face up for again? While this card is face up in the defense position, all enemy monsters are reduced by 100 points each turn. Wait, so like 100, does it grow? Like, like every turn it's 100 more? Or how the fuck does that work? Uh, <laughs> that's a little scary, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Man, all this shit's weak as hell, too. Okay, what do we got? When this card is flipped face up in battle, the opposing enemy is spellbound. When this card is flipped face up, strengthens the Lord of the Lamp by 700 points. That's... Cool. I don't have Lord of the Lamp. <laughs> what? How does that help me? Go for it. What do you, what do you become? Something good? Oh, you become Lord of the Lamp. Look at that. <laughs> what the fuck? Ugh. Uh, I... I'll admit, I didn't really expect that to happen. Uh, just go into defense, I guess, and then... You can go that way. And... I think I already moved you. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's all we can really do right now, man. All right. <laughs> Power decrease, yep. I knew that was gonna happen. I just hope it's not like an additional 100 every turn. It's just the, the flat 100. Holy shit, is that 2100? Oh, bro, we're so fucked. We better, we better get one of those like special summon things that it was talking about, special draw things that can turn the tide of battle because we are fucked. <laughs> Um. Uh, Lunar Queen, Minar. I kind of just want to get rid of everything. Not gonna lie. Like, whoever has the most defense can stay. And, uh, wait, we got a warrior. What can warrior mix with? Insect or fairy? By any chance? Warrior zombie, warrior zombie. Oh lord, there's like so many options here, man. I don't know, fuck it. We'll just uh just go in like a random ass order. I mean actually, you know what? This weak card has the most defense. So I think we want to go that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fuck it. Go for it. Anything cool happen? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Oh, wait, do we only have three cards left in our deck? Is that what that means up there? That might be what that means up there. We might have lost by, uh... By default here, man. Yeah, I think we're gonna lose our first battle. Power decrease again. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, we knew that was going to happen. That's fine. <laughs> that's that's perfectly fine. Yep. Go ahead. Kill the kill the little chimera. That's <laughs> Top get spellbound pitch cuz that hurt. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, just go ahead and show off with all your fancy cards there, Weevil. The nerdy gummy clusters are so freaking good. I'm glad you like them, love. So your base is 1900. Yeah, so it's 100 every fucking turn. Holy hell. Trap activated. Of course. Of course it is. What's it do? Just spellbound? Okay, well, I mean, fine, whatever. Uh, and those are our last three cards. We've got Dark Piercing Light. Flips all enemy cards on the field face up. Fuck it. Let's, uh, let's just do that. Go ahead. Flip them all up. Let's, let's see, let's see what you got. <laughs> let's see what, what, what's on the field before we get fucked. You got a giant flea, a big insect, forest card, bear trap, Insect armor with laser cannon. Of course you do. A uh, Goki Bore. A Cocoon of Evolution. Uh, okay. I don't really know what any of that's for. Uh, sure, end our turn there because <laughs> I think we're fucked, dude. The other phone guy at work calls them crack. You'd buy a box and give them a crack load of them. They're delicious. I don't know. They just don't sound that good to me. I'm not a huge gummy person, though. That's probably why. Hey, thank you for the follow, Orangutan. I appreciate it. Yeah, if it was just nerds, like, nerds are, like, crack to me, man. I I love some nerds, but, uh, <laughs> I don't really care for the gummies that they're coated in. It's not my thing. I mean, if it's that important to you that I try them, I totally will. I didn't think you really cared if I did or not. Bring me one up right now. I'll try it. <laughs> uh, Wing Beast and Spellcaster. I mean, we're, like, fucked. So we might as well see if these two fuse into anything, right? They didn't. Okay. That's <laughs> to be expected, I suppose. 1600. So the only thing I can really hope for is that because I'm in the area that I'm in, um, I can try to like defend the, the mountainous area here. And try to take down his life points that way, but I don't know how that's gonna work out. How does this game work? War of the Roses? Yeah, so it's like the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, sort of, but then you have this whole board game element to it. And there's also card fusion, which is weird as hell. Um, Noodle did bring me up one of those nerd thingies. Okay. So it tastes like nerds. Nerds are good. And it's got a very chewy gummy in the middle. Yeah, not a huge fan, man. Not my favorite. <laughs> it's edible, but like, it's far from anything special. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine I'd ever buy those for myself. Yeah, so if you've ever played the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, it's similar to that, at least as far as like how the two cards fight each other. Like with the attack and defense, and then you have life points like you do in the regular game. Um, but then it's mixed with this whole board game thing. And then my least favorite mechanic is fusion because I, I don't have the time to try and memorize all of the fusions. <laughs> and it also turns out that I suck at this game. I pretty much always have though. Um. So you have 1,600, I have 1,600. So that would be us both dying if you attack that. Um. <laughs> yeah, and we can't summon anything else because, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think we're, I think we're just fucked, dude. And you're still spellbound for another couple of turns. Yeah, I, I mean, I know, like, in the tutorial it said, hey, maybe don't surrender unless absolutely necessary. But I think we might have gotten to that point where it's absolutely necessary, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, shit, that's right, and we get weaker by 100 every turn. 
because of that stupid perfect goth or goth <laughs> that perfect goth bro that perfect moth so yeah sadly i think we're gonna lose our our first goal here man fuck <laughs> shit yep as soon as he finishes up his turn i think we gotta call it man we gotta call the duel there son of a bitch that's annoying Yep, surrender it. I'm so annoyed. Freaking Weevil, dude. Hate him. Hate that dude. <laughs> so, I don't really remember how the game works. We lost. But if I remember correctly, there's not much of a penalty, right? Like, we can just fight him again? Haha, <laughs> I win, you lose. I'm good, you stink. Yeah, okay, so we can just keep fighting him. Whenever we uh, whenever we lose like that, that's what I thought. That's how I thought it worked, but it's been so long since I played, I couldn't remember. Um, as far as this game goes, man, I'm definitely gonna be playing more of it. Uh, once we're done with the next game, the game that we're actually completing right now, uh, Odin Sphere, uh, this is a strong contender for the next game to finish because I I love Yu-Gi-Oh, and uh, I've never played that many games. Have you played Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Links? No, I haven't. That's like I was just saying, I haven't actually played all that many of the Yu-Gi-Oh games before, outside of uh you know, the card game. I used to play a fair bit of the card game. But I've only ever played the PlayStation 1 Yu-Gi-Oh game. Um, the name of which I can't remember right now. And then this one here. That's the only two. But I'm definitely interested in trying out more of them whenever, uh, whenever I get a chance. Can't believe you lost to Weevil. Me neither, man, to be honest. Like, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like his deck is stronger than ours just straight up like it, it's meant to be stronger than ours um he's got a, a deck of 854 ours is rated at 825 and he's got the home field advantage with all of those stupid forest types and we don't have like any forest advantage so like that that was a tough first uh duel honestly i'm wondering even though technically his deck is a lot stronger at 960 I wonder if uh, we would have more advantage here, because it, it's probably more mountainous, more wastelandish, you know, than uh, than the other one, than than Weevil is. So whenever we eventually get to come back to this game, I think that's uh, what we'll do is is try out Rex Raptor next instead of instead of Weevil. Yeah, but it's Weevil. I mean, hey, Nate, you're trying to get a uh, streaming set up. You can go ahead and play this game and uh, show us how it's all done. How about that? <laughs> I'm down to watch you show me how to beat Weevil's ass. With this deck. No picking the other decks, okay? You got to use this specific deck. Now, I'm sure it's possible. We would have had more of a chance if we wouldn't have fucked up that one actual little powerful card that we had in, in the deck. Like, the only card we had that was capable of taking out some of his creatures it had what like 20 2700 attack power something something along those lines that and uh if we knew the summoning system oh and we have that one power up card that i didn't know how it worked um that would have helped on a little bit or helped us a little bit but uh yeah we kind of fucked up how to use it so <laughs> that hurt us a bit but yeah you're just picking on me because you hate Weevil? Nah, I know, man. You're good. You're good. No hard feelings here, man. Oh, fuck. We are already running a little bit late, though. As much time, uh, as much as I want to keep playing this game, um, I think we got to call the stream there for the night. My usual stream on, just to remind everybody, on tomorrow night is canceled because I'm not going to be home tomorrow night. Uh, well, I will be, but I'll be sleeping to to hop on a train and, and leave uh, very, very early in the morning. Um, so I won't be able to stream tomorrow night, but other than that, I plan on keeping my stream schedule as per usual. It may be a little screwy on Thursday, but we'll play that by ear. I don't know what game we're playing next. Something else on the PS2, but that's to, to be determined. And uh, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm currently in the middle of doing my PlayStation 2 gauntlet. I'm trying to collect and stream every North American PS2 game that can be streamed at least. Because of copyright reasons and uh, one or two PS2 games being banned on Twitch. There's a couple I can't do. But yeah, 
for the most part we're just trying out games right now but on saturdays we actually do play a game to completion um obviously for a lot of games it takes more than one saturday right now we're doing odin sphere an awesome little uh 2d side scrolling action beat em up rpg thing uh with some beautiful art man it's got some really good fucking art but uh like i mentioned though this game's going to be on that list of games that i want to complete because i just i love Yu Gi Oh stuff mr noodles getting tired yes i i know love <laughs> It's getting late for us, I know, I know. I'm signing off, don't worry. GX Tag Force 2, which one's that, uh, Nate? Is that is that another uh, Yu-Gi-Oh game, right? Because Yu-Gi-Oh GX, that's like what came out after the regular Yu-Gi-Oh game. Or not game, but uh, the, the regular Yu-Gi-Oh anime. GX was like the, the next iteration of it or whatever. If I remember correctly. Yeah, it's on PSP, dope. I have to give it a try one of these days then. That sounds cool. I have to find a copy of it first. It seems like Yu-Gi-Oh games aren't usually that expensive or hard to find. So, I mean, it helps it's very popular in America. Or at least was very popular in America there for a time. But anyways, guys, alright. Uh, I think that's enough bullshit and dilly-dallying. So, unless anyone has any questions or anything, I think that's all we got time for tonight, sadly. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming and hanging out with me. Thank you to everyone new that stopped into the stream. And a uh, special shout-out to Orangutan for uh, for the follow and for BSing with us for a little bit. I appreciate it, guys. And hopefully I see you on Thursday. I'm ignoring Noodle's question. <laughs> Y'all have a nice night now. Bye-bye. Nope. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> so I think what we uh what we learned here is that I should not cheat because that was terrible. In a capture the flag game, you must grab the flag and return it to a dead box to win the game. Grab the flag by moving close to the flag stand. Great, I grabbed the flag. Move it into the next glowing circle to continue. Now you must deliver the flag to the dead box. Move close to the dead box to deliver. You now know the basic moves. Cool. Good luck and have fun. GLHF, guys. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. This, uh, I mean, it had the potential to be a good game, right? It could have just been a, a shooter like any other. And then they could have just replaced the guns with paintball guns, right? That would have been fine. But instead, they made this. And... You know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rag on it too hard. Maybe maybe it'll end up being okay. Maybe it's not so bad. Maybe we just gotta get into the actual game, you know? Badlands Open, Chicago, Illinois. Three man rookie, single elimination, number of fields are four. We use Draxus Hellfire Paint. Is that some product placement in my video game? I am furious. Not really, I don't. Okay. Uh preliminary match, three out of five rounds. Continue. Sure. Whatever. Let's go. Make your own custom match comprised of any field in the game or any custom fields you have created. Go to extra features slash match editor. That's very nice. Having the, the ability to uh, create custom games and whatnot is always, uh, always really cool. Change starting bunker with L. Wait, so I can start wherever I want? I'm guessing that's where my two teammates are starting. Why don't we uh why don't we take front mid there? Your season started. Welcome to the Badlands. Now we got a little bit of music going. I uh I am actually gonna go into the options real quick and just turn it down a little bit. Because this sounds like real music. I don't know if it is or not. But while I like having a little bit of a little bit of something in the background. I also don't like uh, infringing on copyright. So we're just going to turn that down just in case. Because I don't know who the music is by. And I'd rather not focus on it. We will resume the game. Okay, cool. So, I mean, the goal is just to to, to, to beat the enemy, right? How do we lean again? 